Hey everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the U.S. Market Update here on the EWO channel. Uh, pretty interesting week. We take a look at the chart of the S&P. We've been talking about this zigzag pattern for a long time now. Went back and found the initial uh, thumbnail. So uh, five months ago, we started talking about this potential uh, target up here at 436. Look at the price, 436.66. And on Tuesday night, during Trade Finder, I showed this, because where was the close Tuesday night? 436.66. And while I'm talking about Trade Finder, if you haven't signed up, please do so. You can use a link here, or you can go to our website at ewotrader.com. We do it every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. We talk the markets, we look for trade ideas, and we have a live Q&A at the end. It's great. Uh, we have a really good community, ask great questions, love to have you. So if you haven't joined us before, uh, sign up now. So we were celebrating Tuesday night with the fact that it zigzag, this is not going to be good for the Elliott Wave haters, but this zigzag pattern uh, with the FIB level hit dead smack on the nose. So then the question begs, where do we go from here? Well, all right, so far we already know we've gone a little bit higher from there. And if we take a look in this wave three, there's another zigzag pattern here. So it's a complex C wave. And look where we closed today. Right on that 100% extension of the uh, complex C wave. So basically what we're saying is there's two LA wave zigzag patterns that have hit spot on uh, this week. And now we have to look to see what's the possibility that we go up to these extension levels. Now, the wave five pattern, the Ellie wave algorithm is saying that, hey, we see a potential of moving to 460, which is right at where the 161.8% extension is from that larger zigzag. So could we go from there? We are a little bit overbought short term. We look at the moving averages here, and you can see that uh, there is some separation. Let me take these zigzags off so you can see the separation with the 10-day moving average. Um, and we're moving into a holiday weekend. So a reminder that the markets are closed Monday for uh, Juneteenth. So we won't see the markets trading again till Tuesday. So having a little bit of a pause today in front of the holiday weekend, I think makes a lot of sense. But perhaps we pull back just a little bit more, get back to that 10-day moving average, and then we'll see if we can make a run to that C wave extension. It's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, other economic news that came out this week, Tuesday we had the CPI report, and the CPI report comes out and says, hey, you know, inflationary pressures are easing, giving the Fed room to pause if they would like. And then on Wednesday, we get the Fed meeting that comes out, and the Federal Reserve says, no, nope, no, nope, we're not pausing. Uh, we're going to pause this meeting, but we're figuring probably two more rate hikes uh, this year. That was a surprise to the markets. Uh, but everybody thought they would pause in this June meeting, but Fed fund futures had priced in another 25 basis points in July. And then, as you know, moving into September, a rate cut had been priced in. But they're saying, no, no, two more rate hikes. Uh, and we have the uh, yield curve. I'll show you a quick chart of the yield curve. Uh, the 210 inversion is now back to 90 basis points. 100 basis points is when we had the uh, financial regional banks uh, starting to go uh, starting to go under and have problems. So we're nearing that again. So a while ago, back at the beginning of the year, I was saying that I felt like the Fed may go from raising rates one month to cutting rates the next. It didn't look like that was going to play out. But if they're really serious about doing two more rate hikes and then we start to feel the effects, I just can't discount discount the 210 yield curve inversion. We're going on a year now. In July, it'll be a year since it's uh, started its inversion. And we're going back up. We're widening the spread again. I, you just, it's, there's something we don't know. And so we remain with the cautious optimism. On top of the fact, the last thing I'll say here about the S&P chart is that we've moved vertically to the upside. So uh, a little bit of a pause here, perhaps a little more upside. La well, okay, one more thing. So all right, one more thing uh, is a reminder that we're moving in towards the end of June, which is the end of a quarter. Uh, and there was a conversation on the financial networks that last year was one of the worst years of performance from money managers in history. And the averages are showing they're not doing a whole lot better at the beginning of this year. 
Because if you haven't been in the seven stocks that are moving, the equal weighted S and P is only up three percent. So that's that's not a big move. Uh, and so they're underperforming, and they're looking for those end of quarter bonuses. So I think we could see a little bit of chasing performance to the end of June, and then we'll see if we get a little bit of a pullback in July. So just some things to think about. Looking at the chart of the ten year, kind of interesting that with this um, Fed being a bit more hawkish that we didn't get more of a bounce to the upside uh, in the interest rates. You can see the TNX here, eh, it just bounced up a little bit, uh, but we're hovering around that wave four level, right at the 78.6% FIB level. Interesting that it didn't move higher. Uh, is there some money beginning to move into the bond market? It doesn't seem like it when you look at um, the equities, especially with those uh, handful of stocks that are moving that say anything about AI, but it's becoming eerily reminiscent of 1999 with the dot com. And then here's one that's really confusing to me is the dollar. Look at this move down in the dollar. The Fed says they're going to uh, hike rates two more times and the dollar goes down. What's the dollar telling us that we don't know about? So I have some concern when we see that that 210 yield curve is widening, the dollar's moving to the downside at a time when you thought, well, hey, perhaps we, uh, uh, we, um, uh, hold steady or even drift back. So uh, I, I think that uh, something uh, is going on that we're not aware of yet. Could be a, a market surprise, some sort of a black swan event. But it looks like the dollar wants to come back down and challenge 101. It's not in a five wave pattern anymore. Uh, it is a little bit oversold, uh, as you can see from the 10 day moving average. But there's a lot of support at 101. And based on that move today, it looks like it wants to come and test it. So uh, yeah, enough stuff to still stay concerned, even if you have been participating in this vertical move to the upside. But remember, I don't like vertical moves. Uh, and uh, we, we need to see some sort of at least backing and filling, if not full on um, drawback. Looking at the Dow, the Dow has uh, uh, been between that 330, 340 level for a long time. Now, the Dow chart uh, has labeled into uh, an LA wave pattern, and it's in a wave three also. Uh, so we broke above 340. We came down and tested it. Very classic stuff. That's healthy. Break above it, come down and test it. What was resistance now becomes support. We're moving back to the upside here. And you can see that uh, uh, tiny bit overbought on the close. Kind of interesting stuff uh, going on with the, uh, the Dow as well. And then let's take a look at the queues. Everybody wants to talk about the queues, right? That's where the action's been. That's where those handful of stocks uh, that have been driving the market are located. And we look at the 10-day moving average here. Once again, a little bit overbought from the 10-day moving average uh, and a little bit vertical. So we're going a little to the upside here. So what do you all think? By the way, we're pushing... 40,000 subscribers here on our Evo channel. If you haven't subscribed before, please do so. And for this push uh, to 40,000 subscribers, we're going to have a little contest. We did this before when we hit 30,000. So we're going to give away four of our full-on level three uh, alert subscriptions. We have an impulse, a volatility, and a time strategy, which is AI-based. So we have directional, we have non-directional, and we have an ai base. So when one of the markets isn't working, one of the others is. Our performance has been really good. You can see it at ewotrader.com. We're going to give away four of them. All you have to do to enter is post some sort of a comment. You want to make your favorite Chuck Norris one-liner, that's what we did before, or just post a comment regarding uh, any of um, the markets that we're talking about. All it takes is post a comment under the uh, uh, recording and you're entered in for uh, for the drawing once we hit 40,000 subscribers. So uh, help, us, help us get there. Hit that subscribe button. So a little bit of concern with this vertical market in the queues vertical move in the queues, the ID, uh, IWM, the small caps uh, showing life. Uh, as you know, if you've been watching these recordings, we had tightened the range. It had been 170 to 190 for about a year. And then for a few months, we tightened it up between 170 and 180. And now look where we've gone. Right back up, rocketed up, and then consolidating under 190. Can we break 190? You can see that we've allowed the 10-day moving average to catch up after being a bit overbought. So is the IWM getting ready to try to make a break above 190? Kind of appears that uh, that's what's going on. Uh, and that's conducive to uh, the market moving uh, a bit higher if you're a believer that the small caps give you a good 
risk on type of scenario. We look at the DMI, which we like to look at to see whether um, resistance levels or uh, support levels can be broken. It's a pretty solid DMI. So it's telling you there was some strength to this move and, and perhaps uh, it's just gathering enough momentum and energy to break above that upper trend line. And then off we go again. Bitcoin. Uh, well, at the time of this uh, recording, Bitcoin is back above 26,000. We've been talking about this 27,000 for so long. Uh, and I was using the analogy of your fingernails hanging on to the edge of a cliff uh, because that's how important holding 27,000 was. But we'd also been talking, uh, again, if you've watched these, you know uh, that uh, nothing was retraced from this move from 20,000 to 27,000, a big vertical move. They usually get retraced. That's why I don't like vertical moves, one of the rules. And now we're starting to do that. And at least at this point, we've held right at that previous wave three high at 25,000. And as I said at the time, because we had trades 24 seven, but yeah, I know that. Uh, and we get an uh, end of day print for software programs such as this so that we can uh, analyze the charts. But at the actual time of this recording, which is just after the market closed uh, on Friday the 16th, um, Bitcoin is back above 26,000. So it's having a good day right now. Remember that halving is coming uh, the first quarter of next year. So perhaps this is enough of a test lower and then we're ready to, to start a, uh, a run into that. At least historically, every time Bitcoin's had a halving, you've had a big run. So we'll see if that holds uh, true this time as well. A couple of international markets that I'd like to show you. India, we've been watching this one and it just continues to power higher. Uh, so impressive. This market, we had uh, the break above 41, which was the support resistance level. Once again, it broke above it, came back down and tested it. That's really positive uh, technical uh, uh, action there. And then moving back to the upside, we've got a uh, uh, another zigzag pattern here. So we take a look and there's a zigzag right there in that three wave. And we've broken above the 100% extension. So when you do that, as we were talking about with the S&P, we look to see, could we get an extended C wave? Again, the 161.8% level, right where the algorithm is showing uh, with some sort of a, a target price, whether it's a wave five or a wave three. So we look at the DMI and that's as good as it gets. Uh, you can look at a million charts and you're not gonna find a more supportive DMI than that. We know nothing's 100%. But it looks like the INDA wants to continue higher. And so we could likely see that 161.8% extension. So uh, we have a lot of uh, subscribers from India at our uh, uh, website, ewotrader.com. So I'm sure they're, they're smiling as we move into this uh, holiday weekend as the market powers higher. Now, last week, we had a question about uh, the Japan market. And we've shown this chart on the EWJ a couple of times. Uh, it's had a nice run as well from those uh, October lows. You can see that was one heck of a run, uh, a zigzag pattern here as well. And we can go back and look at this big one, or we can look at the smaller ones, uh, the zigzagging all over the place. But uh, certainly looks like a little more to the upside. We put the 10-day moving average here. We'd gotten a bit overbought on this move that occurred back here on the 13th of June, sideways consolidation, very constructive, allowing the 10-day moving average to catch up. It does look like the EWJ uh, wants to go at least to 65, and then we'll see where things go from there. So thanks for watching. As a reminder, if there's a specific symbol that you want to look at using the chapters features, you can go right there. I uh, hope everybody has a great holiday weekend and happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Enjoy your holiday weekend. Take care, everybody. If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market's likely going to go, and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.